Hello, my name is Chad Bishop. I'm the producer of this project, Norman Baker's The Man in Purple. I'm excited to be a part of the team that is aspiring to bring this idea to life. This is a story that's so unbelievable, you'll, you'll think that we made it up, but, but we really didn't. It's all based on our research. Who was Norman Baker? Well, that's a very hard question to answer because his, uh, his scope of accomplishments of, of intriguing interests is beyond what any, what any short film can cover, but we're going to give you a taste. He was a vaudeville showman, a hypnotist, a mentalist. He believed in the power of the human mind. He was the consummate entrepreneur, having many, many inventions and companies, all based from the small town of Muscatine, Iowa. He was the pioneer of modern day radio broadcasting, one of the first to challenge the FCC with respect to censorship content and the distances that he would broadcast his radio messages from, his tyrants. He was way before Howard Stern as far as challenging <laughs> what you can say and do on the radio, even allegedly having an affair, an on-air affair with his mistress. We're going to be focusing a lot on one of his most noteworthy claims to fame, his cure for cancer. Norman Baker believed in the power of the mind to heal, and based on his charisma and ability to broadcast through his radio station miles and miles and miles beyond what the FCC would technically be allowed to have him do, he was able to, to come up with this cure and start a hospital in Muscatine and attract 50,000 people to our park when he did an outdoor open air demonstration of his cure on a farmer who was afflicted with cancer. My grandma was able to actually walk by and see this and she told me the story of how he would sprinkle this dust on this open skull in the middle of, of this park. People were passing out as they walked by. Of course, part of the story we'll show you happens at his cancer-curing hospital, the Baker Institute. You can just picture him spiriting all the bagfuls of money at, at, in the dead of the night. And of course, the nurses taking the patients who weren't cured of cancer on gurneys so the other patients wouldn't see. It was rumored that there were more uh, graveyard workers during this time than ever in the history of Muscatine. <laughs> He went on to really challenge the American Medical Association, lost his license several times, went to jail, you name it, this man has been through it, and we're going to show you a story that you are going to want to see, and we're going to make a documentary that's going to really challenge the way you look at modern day medicine and our approaches to curing cancer and other illnesses. So what we're asking for is some financial support so that we can bring this idea to life. We have a grant from the Iowa Humanities uh, already. They believe in this project, but now we need to make sure that we can match those funds and bring this to life so that we can hire a crew, a cast, so we can feed people, so that we can pay location fees if needed. And since it was based in the 1920s and 30s, we're going to have expenses involving props and set design, and especially wardrobe, because we're going to need a lot of purple suits. But don't just take my word for it. Let me introduce now Max Churchill. Max is a Norman Baker enthusiast who even spoke at his funeral. Hi, my name is Max Churchill. I'm the man that does uh, Norman Baker <clears throat> and Mark Twain. And I think it would be a great idea that <clears throat> what is almost unbelievable that we make some kind of a deal that will fit in the computers of, the, of not only the, United, the world but the United States. And uh, this is the type of stuff that we really want because it's almost unbelievable, especially with uh, Norman Baker.